Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back with my May book haul part one. So the books that have been sent by publishers and the books that I bought myself in the first half of May. Admittedly it's belated because I don't quite know where May has gone, it's sort of just vanished. Um, and also for the ultra, ultra, ultra observant of you, no this is not a reading vlog as I said I would bring reading vlogs back on Sundays. I'm going to bring them back on Mondays but not tomorrow, the Monday after because last week was not really very much of a reading vlog kind week like I did lots of different bits and bobs so it's more snapshots and snippets which actually if you're one of my patrons you'll have seen in my latest weekly savage shenanigans extra video um but I didn't really well no I did do a lot of reading but I didn't do any reading I could vlog so I read Paula Hawkins latest uh well forthcoming novel didn't want to spoil that for anybody read one of the books I'm going to wrap up that's the fourth in the series read a uh, book club's uh book which was Graham Norton's home stretch that'll be premiering tomorrow at seven-ish so you can join and have a chat with me. Me and Melanie recorded in the first time in real life in a bookshop in ages and we had so much fun and we were so excited about being in a bookshop and it was an amazing bookshop, more of that tomorrow. Um, but um, it's also a very uh, varied and it's a conversation, let's put it like that, but that'll be tomorrow. So I didn't want to like talk about that too much because I was going to be doing it then and then um also I was finishing off the Desmond Elliott prize reading before the shortlist meeting so it just didn't feel very vloggy but next next week or starting from today this week going forward will be so that'll be then and before I get on to the books I'm talking for two minutes already that was not the intention um I just wanted to ask you do you prefer having wrap-ups and hauls split into two on this channel every month or would you rather I try and did um, one big wrap up and one big book haul um, instead. I'm just asking because I'm just thinking about going forward and some of the things that I want to do and stuff. So let me know in the comments down below, a big one of each or um, two substantial yet shorter ones. <laughs> All sounds so wrong. Let's get talking about the book. So first up, as always, it is books from publishers. And the one that I got that I'm most, 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 most excited about is Alif Shafak's The Island of Missing Trees. Now, I don't know anything about this. I don't want to know anything about it. I want to go into it completely blind and just see what I get from it, because that's what I did with her previous novel, which is my first of her novels that I've read. And I loved it for that. Um, I am a huge fanboy of Alif Shafak as a person. I think she's phenomenal and I just think whenever I hear her talk she's so eloquent and open and interesting and passionate and all those things and it does go into her fiction too so this is one of the highlights. It's out on the 5th of August. Then we have um, Juliet Jack's Variations which is um, a series of short stories, oh sorry it's a collection of short stories not a series of short stories, which look at all the different trans experience and I think it might even go back through history possibly, yes it does, back to the 1920s. Um, so I think this is going to be absolutely phenomenal, I kind of predict this might be one of my books of the year, I've just got a feeling about it. Um, it's out I should say, sorry, in June. So uh, yeah, all these books will be linked below where you can go to pre-order them. Pre-order is really, 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 really help a book. Um, then we have, um, coming out in August, Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zorma, which is a memoir um, of uh, Michelle's life growing up as um, she is, let me get this right, the only, ama the only amazing kid at school. I bet she was amazing. But um, the only Asian American kid at her school in Oregon and um, struggling with her mother's high expectation, the culture that came with them versus the culture uh, in Oregon. And that sort of stuff is absolute savage catnip. Um, I love that sort of thing. So I think this is going to be phenomenal. It's, uh, thank you, pick it off for that. And they also sent me uh, Magma by Thora Hjordleifstotter. I hope that's right. Um, and this is an Icelandic novel and it is all about a woman who is in an abusive marriage. I think it's told in short, sharp vignettes, which is another thing that I absolutely love. Like there's one here, which is just called Blue Balls. It's only a couple of lines. So I think I'm gonna devour this. Um, although I think it's gonna be quite hard to read in parts. So yeah, but I'm very, very much looking forward to it if that's the right term. It's out in July. Then the lovely people at Pushkin sent me the two books of theirs that have been uh, long listed indeed. Oh no, they're now shortlisted, sorry, for the Man Booker International Prize. So we have uh, Benjamin uh, Labatut's uh, When We Cease to Understand the World, which I believe is quite sciencey, uh, mathematic -y, 
and possibly not very me-y. But I'm going to dip into it and give it well. And if not, I'm going to give it to my stepdad, who I think would love this because he's well into science and that sort of thing. And then we have At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop. Now, this is about Senegalese soldiers fighting in the Great War. And this one, out of the whole shortlist, really, really sort of stuck out for me. Um, out of the long list, Minor Detail was the one that was the most interesting because I sort of, I watch it fondly from afar. But I'm also aware that I don't read enough translated fiction, so I would like to get to more. So I think this is one that I will be heading to very, very soon indeed. Then, one that I'm going to have to read very quickly before my mother uh, comes in a few weeks because she's going to steal this of me. It's The Women of Troy by Pat Barker, which is um, following on from uh, The Silence of the Girls, which is a book that I enjoyed very much, but I didn't feel like the women really got their voice out, which is what the whole sort of... Well, the way the whole book was pitched was that, and I didn't think it kind of did it, uh, whereas Natalie Haynes, I thought, really, really did with a, th with a thousand ships. Um, but I'm going to give her a second try and see how I get on with this one, because there were moments of that one that I really enjoyed. And I'm just really enjoying classical myth retellings a lot, to be honest. So uh, there's that. Now, this book really intrigues me, that the lovely folk at... Oh, and I should say that is out in... Uh, I think that's out in August as well. Um... Then we have The Good Neighbours by Nina Allen, which the folk at Quirkus and River and sent me. And there's absolutely no blurb on this, which is perfect for me because I don't love a blurb that much. However, I, it's also all the more intriguing because I'm like, well, what is even the gist of it? And all it says on the back is what happened inside a house when no one was watching? What lives did they lead? Kath wondered drowsily. All the silent objects, the moonlit shadows flitting like goblins through empty rooms. I am really, really intrigued by that. So intrigued, it's giving me an itchy nose. That's maybe a sign, because I do get itchy noses when I'm doing videos. Anyway, um, the next two I have mentioned before, these are finished copies. They're both out, well, one's out in June, and I think one is out now. Um, the one out in June is The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko uh, Imamura. And this is about a woman who um, is a bit quirky and different. But actually, it's not really about, well, it is about her, but that's not the focus on her because she thinks she's being followed and it turns out she is. But by who and why? Um, and yeah, I'm very, very, very excited. I wonder if it's us that are following her. I don't know. Um, the lovely folk at Head of You sent me a finished copy of The Wolf Den by um, Elodie Harper, which is set in the brothels of Pompeii. They also very, very kindly sent my mother a copy. So maybe this is one that we could read. I'm trying to think of what me and Mum can do together going forward when we're not reading for the Women's Prize. I'm thinking maybe sort of like, books set in um, classic civilization or classic myth retellings maybe could be something like once a quarter or I don't know I'll have a think about it what would you like let me know in the comments down below so um, yeah but this one I'm very keen to read and I did not know this author had a book coming out I'm very excited it's here and that is Sion and this is Red Milk don't know anything about it don't want to know anything about it, want to go into it um, completely by and just read and get lost in it. I have to say, I didn't get on so well with Codex 1962, is it called? I stopped reading that and I would like to go to back, back to that at some point. But I loved Moonstone so much. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping this is going to be kind of like, well, not the same as Moonstone because nobody wants the same book twice. But you know what I mean? More in that uh, wheelhouse, stable, wherever it is, of, the, of his writing. Then we have um, a memoir, Will This House Last Forever by Xanthi Barker. This sounds um, like a really, really uh, difficult memoir all about Xanthi's uh, father, who was a poet who she didn't really know in terms of in her life, but yet she kind of knew quite a lot about. And I think it's an investigation into what happened to him because um, he left but she always felt like he would come home at some point and obviously he doesn't. So yeah, I'm intrigued by this one. Um, relationships with fathers really interest me. Um, so yeah. Then we have from the Lulu Folk of Orion, A Narrow Door, which is the new thriller from Joanne Harris of Chocolat fame. I love Joanne Harris's writing. I have not read enough of her books. I've got loads of them on the shelves, including her previous thrillers. And this I think is set in a school. I think quite a few of hers might be. I think she was a teacher at one point, Joanne Harris. I wonder if it all comes from that. Anyway, um, it's intrigued me and I would really, really like to give some um, of her thrillers a go. I don't know if this is part of a series or follows on from the others or whether it's a standalone so I need to look into that as to whether I should head to this one first or go back to another one but this is out in August. Um, 
Then a book that I've also mentioned before, this is a new proof, which is still not the final cover, but different from the one previously. Um, this is The Dark by Emma Horton, and it says one dead body, 12 suspects, 24 hour darkness. That just is enough for me. I think this is going to be fab. Um, and this, I believe, is out in August 2, January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, it is. It's out in August. I still can't do that. I still can't work out what month is what number. Just Boop, flips my brain. And um, now the next one, I wasn't sure that I was going to read if I'm 100% honest, and I will always be 100% honest with you. And um, it's Night Hawking by Russ Thomas, which is set in the uh, Botanic Gardens in Sheffield. I think it's the Botanic Gardens. Yes, Botanical Gardens in Sheffield, um, where a body is found that may have been buried for quite a long time or could possibly be recent, but nobody spotted it. And so that is the mysterious case. Now, this is Russ Thomas's second um, thriller. His previous one was called Fire Watching. And I was just a bit like, mm, OK, it's set in the north, which does intrigue me, but you know, I've got quite a lot of thrillers. And then I was in Gaze the Word this week and it was there and I was like, mm hmm, okay, maybe this has got a queer twist to it or it's a queer author who I would like to support. So that made me think, right, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a whirl. And then last from publishers, but certainly not least, is this graphic novel in by Will McFile, which is about Nick, a young illustrator who just can't connect with people on various different levels and it looks at how he tries to and how that all goes. So I'm really, really intrigued for this one. Um, Candice Carty Williams thought it was brilliant, which made me very excited. And I did see her mentioning it on her social, so that intrigued me. So when the publisher said, would you like one? I said, yes. Now onto the books that I bought myself. The first three are second-hand joys from a charity shop, um, which is something I'm getting more in the swing of again. I used to buy books a lot in charity shops when I was younger because we couldn't really afford to go to Watson's, I think we would like go once a month as a real treat. So charity shops are amazing, as were, of course, libraries, which is why I love working uh, for companies that work with libraries and support them and all that kind of shenanigans, which is what I do in my day job. Um, but I got these three Agatha Christie's. I love these Fontana editions. I know Natalie does as well. Um, and um, yeah, I got um, The 13 Problems, which I think is a Miss Marple, because I don't like Poirot. I love the rainbow on it, very camp. Um, we've got Towards Zero, which just intrigued me with that. I, I don't know who is the, um, I think like one of them might have been short stories. No, this isn't it. Oh yes, this is short stories, I think. Um, but yeah, so it could be any detective. And then we have uh, N or M. Now is this one a Miss Marple or not? Oh no, it's Tommy and Tuppence. And I feel like I've read a Tommy and Tuppence and really, really, really loved it. Um, was it, why didn't they shoot Evans? That might have been a Tommy and Tuppence one. I might be getting it completely wrong. It could be a completely different duo, but I feel like it was. I enjoyed the high campery of that. So I'm hoping that this has that high camp too. Then I um, ordered the um, Do Team How to Get the Best from Everyone by Charlie Gladstone. So Charlie Gladstone um, owns the Gladstone Estate. He owns the Gladstone's Library, which is a library you can um, sleep in overnight in Wales. Also, I should say, I um, work with Charlie on uh, curating uh, literary strands through festivals. We haven't done our first yet, it's coming in September and then we've got another one in the spring. Very, very excited. One of the authors who I might have mentioned already in this selection may well be attending. Um, but um, I think Charlie is brilliant. And what I love is he's very, um, he's very much, you are your own expert in X field. He's his own expert in that and how do you work together? And it's how he works with teams to do that, to build like the best teams and get the best from everyone. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this um, indeed. Now I read a book that I wasn't expecting to love. Myself and the lovely Becca, Becca in the book, have accidentally started reading romance novels together. People will talk. Um, and we recently read Get Alive, Chloe Brown, and both Blinky loved it, and I know she's done the same thing, and bought the following two. So I have Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Actual Age, Eve Brown. Um, it follows the stories of um, Chloe's two sisters and their romantic uh, lives. So, uh, yeah, they are steamy. They are pacey and they're just, yeah, I just really, really, really enjoyed reading it. It's like opened a whole new uh, sort of door of potential fiction I can go and find out more about, a whole new genre, so that's exciting. And then when I was in Wales, going back to Wales, I went to Browser's Bookshop and got this lovely tote, because who can resist a tote, even if you've got like, I don't know, I think we've got about 60 or so. Um, so yeah, I got this and, and I was thrilled. And I also bought myself two books. And what I'm trying to do when I go into bookshops is buy a um, 
a new book, but also something that is um, from an author's back catalogue. Now, I already had a copy of this, but they're reissuing this author's books, and I love the new covers. This is Daphne de Meyer's Castle Door, and having um, read Frenchman's Creek while I was away and absolutely bloody loving it, um, that'll be in the next wrap-up that I do. I think I'm only going to do one wrap-up in May because I have... Um, with reading for the Desmond Elliott Prize and stuff, there's, I've not read as much and I won't be because I've got to reread the three shortlisted novels. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so there'll just be one. But then in June, if you guys say you would like two, what did I call it? Sturdy? Substantial? Or one big one? Then, uh, yeah, depending on that is when you'll hear about other books. I, don't, I went off on a tangent there. My brain got lost on big one anyway um so uh castle door i got myself a copy of that in the new edition it's a backlisted book and then this is a book that i've been intrigued by for quite some time it's a huge chunkster of a thing speaking of big ones um, and it is the slaughter man's daughter by yavin Ikovitz. um and again i feel like i think this is translated i might be wrong actually i felt like it was why did i think it was no um and this one I've just seen so many people raving about and just got the idea that it's a massive gothic novel, but I think it's set in Tel Aviv, um, or Minsk, it says here. Um, so yeah, and that I just thought it sounds the sort of thing that I would like, but like slightly different from what I would normally get. And at the moment I have, I, I have, at the moment I'm a ham, I'm always a ham. Um, but at the moment I am thinking about how I want to, I feel like I've lost the sort of read around, but at the same time, I feel like I'm trying out more books than I've ever tried before or genres and stuff. Um, although I haven't headed to science fiction or fantasy, but give me not too long and I will be. Um, but yeah, and, and so this to me, I was like, right, it's historical, it's gothic, it's about a part of the world that I don't know enough about and I want to give it a whirl, so uh, I'm going to. Um, and I'll, uh, I think this is the sort of book that when I'm travelling around the country this summer, I can just literally have on a train and get completely and utterly lost in. And I'm going to be a, doing a lot of train journeys. And last but not least, I bought myself, and I read this last week, and it's one of the books that I felt I couldn't vlog about because as it's the fourth in a series, I don't want to give anything away about one, two or three. It's Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. And uh, we follow the latest instalment of what is going on with Charlie and Nick. Um, so, yeah, I'll say no more. I just love this series. I absolutely love it. Um, it's beautifully drawn. I think it's really, really deftly done because it's very frank and direct without being... Um, it just finds a really nice balance of... I can imagine as a young queer kid reading this, I would get, I would get it, but it, it doesn't take anything too, it's a graphic novel, but it doesn't take anything too graphically, yet it's really honest and open. That's what I mean. Um, so uh, yeah, everyone's talking about these, everybody loves them. So there we go. Those are the books that I hauled in the first half of May. I'll be back with the second lot. There's still more to come. I'm back in London this week. There could be more bookshops visited. Um, actually, I have to say I went to two bookshops last week and didn't really buy anything because I didn't went to three. Um, I was just overwhelmed going back into a bookshop. It was like so much choice, especially in foils. I was like, wow. Um, and then in Gaze the Word, I kind of, because um, it, it's quite small, so it was like one in one out. I didn't want to spend, I didn't want to take up too much time in there. So yeah, I need to go back and peruse a little bit more and then it'll probably be very bad for my bank balance indeed. But there we go. Anyway, let me know any books that you've got recently. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you enjoyed them. If you didn't enjoy them, don't let me know. Let's have a chat about that after I've read them and then you can tell me whatever you like. I'm more than happy then. But at the moment, I'm very excited about them and looking forward to them all. I will be back tomorrow with Melanie for Book Club in a Bookshop with a very, very um, interesting discussion of Graham Norton's home stretch. I hope you will join us there. Well, certainly join me. Well, join us, but also literally join me because it'll be a premiere. Until then, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.